Hey fellow investors, nice to see you again. This is the third episode of my value investing class. In the last class, I discussed deep value investing and how it was done, how to evaluate stocks in Ben Graham's way. But I point out that there are some problem with deep value investing and that's why Warren Buffett gradually changed from deep value investing to high quality investing. The biggest problem with deep value investing is that the companies that qualify for deep value investing are usually poor quality. So the time is not on our side. The value of the companies will decline over time. So as it goes, Warren Buffett realized that it is better to buy a company that the value will appreciate over time. So the value will grow as time goes. In this way, time is on our side. From my own investing experience, I also gradually realized that the most important thing in investing is to buy a company that can appreciate their value over time. The person who influenced me the most in my stock picking is Peter Lynch. So I want to start with Peter Lynch and explain how he invests. The first investing book I ever read is Peter Lynch's Beating the Street. You can see it here. And if you're not, not familiar with Peter Lynch, Peter Lynch was a portfolio manager with Fidelity Magellan Fund, and he managed the fund from 1977 to 1990. Over the 13 years, he grew the fund from 18 million to 14 billion. He achieved 29% a year for 13 years. That was tremendous. So how does Peter Lynch pick stocks? And I want to use three sentences of Peter Lynch's own word to explain how Peter Lynch invests. The first is Peter Lynch said that earnings, earnings, earnings. So he said the earnings is the most important thing to stock picking. If you want to buy a company, you want to invest in companies that have earnings. And he also said that people may wonder what the Japanese are doing and what the Koreans are doing, but ultimately earnings will decide the fate of stock. So to Peter Lynch, in stock picking, the most important thing is to look at the earnings of the company. And the company needs to earn money in good years and in bad years, and also in long term. It can also grow its earnings over time. So where can we find these numbers of earnings? Of course, a place you can go is the income statement of the company's annual or quarterly report. And you can also come to Guru Focus and uh, where you can find the 30 year financial page of every company and check their earnings. So here I will show you some examples how to check the earnings of a company in Guru Focus. So for instance, say I want to look at the Walmart, earnings of Walmart, I just come to here in the search box and uh, I come to a 30 year financial page of Walmart. And you can see in the, the area here is a per share data. And uh, we have revenue per share, uh, we have EBITDA per share, and earnings per share. This is where we want to take a look, want to look at. And here you can see that we have the financial data listed from 2006 to 2020. And if we look at the earnings, uh, we can see that Walmart earnings has always been growed, growing. If I click this, uh, this line open, we can see the numbers in chart. You can see this is the earnings of Walmart. Walmart had some hiccups in the last few years. In 2018, 2017, the earnings was declining. Now the earnings are increasing again. But Walmart had always positive earnings. And after that hiccup in 2018, 2019, and Walmart stock went up and earnings went up also. So you can see that earnings are very closely related to a company's earning, uh, stock. Uh, if I look at another company, very well known, of course, uh, Apple, and you look at the earnings per share, you can see the trend from here. You can see earnings of Walmart, Apple has been growing steadily over time, and very quickly also actually. 
this is the quarterly, this is the annual. And uh, if I go longer time, longer, longer time, you can see the earnings of, of Apple has been growing tremendously. And that's why the stock was doing extremely well. Of course, uh, also to show you the earnings of Tesla. And um, you can see that Tesla has never had a positive earnings. The company has always been losing money and every year, but the stock has always also do well. People are looking more about the future of Tesla. If it would play out over a long time or not, we don't know, but earning is not doing well. So it add risk to the investing. That's how you can look at the earnings of, of companies. And that's why Peter Lynch said earnings is the most important thing. If I look another company, if we look at a company which is also quite high profile these days, Occidental Petroleum, and we, we know that the company is deep in, uh, in deep trouble, the stock went down uh, a lot. And now we look at the earnings and see that the company had uh, actually pretty good earnings before 2014 when the oil price was high, but it started to lose money in 2015 and 2016. And then it started to earn money again in 2017 and 2019, but it went losing money again here in 2019 and also 2020. So that's why the stock has been in deep trouble because it's not like a Tesla, it's, it's not a, a story stock, and the earnings are extremely important in this case. Uh, you can see the stock has been doing very poorly, lost 80% uh, in last five years. And that's why earnings are extremely the most important thing in stock picking. The second most important thing Peter Lynch said is about the balance sheet of the company. He said, companies that have no debt cannot go bankrupt. So a company is just like a person. When a person has debt, such as mortgage or credit card debt, you have to pay interest on it every month. And you have to earn enough money to pay the interest every month. If you don't have enough money to pay the interest, or when the debt comes due, you cannot pay it off, then you have to go bankrupt. A company is just in a similar situation. A company, if he has debt, has to pay interest on it, and when the debt comes due, has to pay off the debt. If he doesn't have enough money, and he has to sell the asset, and he, if he doesn't have assets or doesn't have enough time to sell the assets, has to borrow new money to pay off old debt. And if he does not, or if he cannot borrow new debt to pay off the old debt, then he has to go bankrupt. When a company goes bankrupt, what happens to shareholders? Usually, you're wiped out. So you must avoid a company that has high risk of going bankrupt. And a company has high debt level relative to its assets and to its cash level. And I will show you in the balance sheet of companies here also. Now we come to the 30-year financial page of Occidental Petroleum. If we go down, uh, you can see we have different areas of, of financial data, like per share data here. If we come to the balance sheet of Occidental Petroleum, and that's where you can find the cash and the debt level of all the companies. And we can see the, the balance sheet and uh, Occidental has the latest data, March of 2020, has about two billion of cash, two billion dollars of cash. And of course it has other assets. And now we come down to the debt part of the company. And you know, that part we have to look at two portions. One is a short-term debt, short-term short -term debt. And Occidental has 2.4, close to 2.5 billion of short-term debt. We said the cash he had was only two billion, and short-term debt means in twelve months this debt is due. And then we look at the long-term debt. The long-term debt is thirty-six billion. 
Wow, that's a lot. Uh, so the total debt, if you add the short-term debt and long-term debt together, it's close to forty billion. And the company has only two billion dollar of cash, as we said. So this is very risky. Why it's risky? Because the debt is very heavy, and it the risk will be smaller only if. The company earns a lot of money, and it, the, its operating cash flow can easily cover the interest rate, uh, interest which is due every month. And here you can see that the company has an operating income uh, over twelve months. Last twelve months was two point nine billion, and the the interest expense was one point one billion, and this is, doesn't look good either, and it has. More than two billion dollars of short-term debt comes due in twelve months, and every month, every every year, it has to pay one point one billion of in interest as well. So this makes the investing situation very very unpredictable. And if we look at another company, I just uh, show you. Okay, just uh, Walmart. And if we look at Walmart, uh, come to the. Balance sheet area, and we can see that Walmart has uh, cash about fourteen billion, about fifteen billion here. And then now we look at the short term debt. In Walmart's case, the short term debt, which has come to due, has ten billion. That's that's quite a lot as well. And long term debt, forty three billion. So Walmart has lots of debt as well, and the situation is much better than Occidental Petroleum. But we look at the. Income statement part, Walmart has operating income of twenty billion last year, and the interest expense is only two point five billion. So in Walmart case, the situation situation is much better because it generates very good income and easily cover the interest and pay off the short term debt. So we wouldn't be worrying about the balance sheet of Walmart. And now if we look at another company. Apple, just just as an as an example, and、uh, we can see that、uh, Apple has forty billion of cash plus other market secu marketable securities, so about close to ninety four billion of cash in Apple's balance sheet. And Apple did some borrowing lately, but it has short-term debt as twenty billion, and the long-term debt eighty-nine billion. So in Apple's case, it can easily handle its debt, especially if you look at the income statement part. The income, the income statement, the operating income of Apple was sixty-five billion, and the interest expense was only three billion. So more than twenty times. Apple can easily handle the the debt level. So in this way, you can clearly see that different companies can have different debt levels, and some for some like Occidental, debt can be a big problem. There's a high risk of bankruptcy, probably,、uh, which makes the investing very unpredictable. So are there companies that have no debt? Yes, there are, of course. Here I want to show you a company that has no debt. Checkpoint Software Technologies, the stock ticker CHKP, and、uh, if we come to the balance sheet area,、uh, this is income statement, it's balance sheet. We can see that the company has、uh, cash and marketable securities, one point seven billion dollars. And now we look at the debt part. The company short term debt is zero, has no short term debt, and long term debt is also zero. So. This is a company that has no debt, and the company has also been doing well with the earnings. You can see here, earnings per share has steadily growing over time. And、uh, for this kind of company, you really don't have to worry about the possibility of bankruptcy. If you look at the stock,、uh, stock is was also quite steady, quite steadily growing over the past ten years. It,、uh, in the past ten years, a Went up two hundred sixty-five percent. So this is a company that has no debt. Here we come back to Peter Lynch again.
Remember, the second most important thing to Peter Lynch, companies that have no debt cannot go bankrupt. The third most important thing to Peter Lynch is, he said, go for a business that any idiot can run. He said, because sooner or later, any idiot probably is going to be running it. That's why I'd rather invest in pantyholes than in communication satellite, or in Montel trees than in fiber optics. The simpler it is, the better I like it. When somebody said, an idiot can run this joint. That's a plus as far as I'm concerned, he said. So what he's saying here is, the company business needs to be simple. This is also like what Warren Buffett said, he said he loves simple business. So here I also want to use some examples. Some people may still remember BlackBerry. It had 50% um, of US smartphone market at one time. But who is using BlackBerry these days? Because the cell phone business is not a simple business. It really requires the CEOs extremely smart, like Steve Jobs or like Larry Page. And uh, if you're not at that kind of level, you cannot compete in that kind of business. But a company like McDonald, it doesn't require the CEO as much. And McDonald had lots of trouble, changed several CEOs in a few years. The business was still doing well and uh, uh, the stock still grew a lot. So you can compare the cell phone business and the restaurant business. The restaurant business is certainly much simpler. It can grow by repeat what it has been doing in one area and expanding, expanding to other areas, just repeat what it had done before. I'm not saying it's totally easy, it's not easy, but the business model is relatively simple to understand. And uh, as investors, if we look at from outside, it's easier for us to understand the business as well. And uh, this reduces the risk of investing. That's why Peter Lynch said, go for a business that any idiot can run, investing in simple business. This comes to finish the third point, third important thing of Peter Lynch investing. And here I want to summarize. For Peter Lynch, the three most important thing in investing are first, earnings, earnings, earnings. The company has, been, has to be making money, making profit, good years and bad years all the time. And second, companies that have no debt cannot go bankrupt. So you want to invest in companies that have low debt levels and uh, reduce the risk of your investing. Third, go for a business that any idiot can run. So investing in simple business. And uh, these three are the core of Peter Lynch investing. Thank you very much. This is Charlie Tian again, and I hope you enjoyed this class. If you want to find the stocks that Peter Lynch would invest you can always come to Guru Focus and we have a screen called Peter Lynch Investing, Peter Lynch Screen, where you can find the stocks that Peter Lynch may lack. And of course, you can also use our all in one screener to screen the stocks based on your own strategies. Uh, we have a lots of more than more than a few hundred different filters here you can set and uh, you screen, you can build your own customized filters as well. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comment area. I will get back to you in my next videos. Thank you very much. See you next time.